331, that's really good. Sing a good play and sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. 331. sing a few courses together, 107, 107. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. In my heart I will enter his courts with praise. I will sing, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, and he has made me glad. 107. Lovely chorus. Let us really sing it. I do, I do. I surely do know that I've been born again. 113. Lovely chorus. That is all second. Right? Come on, everybody. Come on, I will stop. I do. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. 135. What a day that will be. opening hymn tonight is 304 in our own hymn book. Uh, what a lovely hymn it is. We're never, never weary of the grand old song, Glory to God, Hallelujah. We can sing it loud as ever with our faith more strong, Glory to God, Hallelujah. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing, for the way is growing bright and our souls are on the wing. We're going by and by to the palace of a king, Glory to God, Hallelujah. Let's stand and sing this lovely hymn and let's sing it with all of our hearts. Yeah. 
That's good singing. Let's bow in a word of prayer again this evening, and let's pray that the Lord will come and meet with us tonight. Lord, we thank Thee and we praise Thee that many of us can testify that we're going to a mansion that has been prepared for us by the Savior above. We thank Thee and we praise Thee, Lord, for the lovely words of this hymn that we have been singing. We're going by and by to the palace of a king. And, O oh God, we thank Thee tonight that many of us can read our title clear to mansions in the sky. Because of Thy grace and mercy towards us, in that You reached down and You plucked us as brands from the burning and saved us for time and for eternity. We thank Thee, Lord, for that day in our lives when You revealed unto us our need of salvation. And, O oh God, You give us the grace to call upon Thee. You saved us, Lord. O oh God, we're so thankful tonight that we're heaven-bound, that our sins are forgiven, and that hell will never see because of the precious blood that has redeemed us. Oh God, what you have done for so many of us in the meeting tonight, we pray that you'll do for others. We think of those in the meeting who are not saved, those listening on perhaps, and they're still strangers to grace and to God. And even this night, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts and draw them lovingly to the foot of the cross. We do thank Thee, Lord, that God's salvation is offered to the whosoever will. We thank Thee for the invitation of the gospel, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we pray even tonight, Lord, as the message goes forth, that You be pleased, Lord, to give men and women and young people grace to call upon Thee for eternal redemption. Bless our sister Rebecca as she sings. We pray, Lord, that every part... Uh, in this meeting tonight would be glorifying to Thee. And, O oh God, that we might know a real sense of Thy presence this evening. We do thank Thee that we can truly say again tonight, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And, Lord, we do rejoice, and we are glad. We rejoice tonight because we have a wonderful gospel to preach. And we thank Thee, 
Lord, that we're not ashamed of that gospel. For, Lord, you weren't ashamed of us when you went the whole way to Calvary and there died in our place, suffering our hell in your own body upon the tree. O oh God, in these days we pray that you'll bless as thy word goes forth in the gospel. Undertake for us now, we just commit our way to thee. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. That's good singing. Let's keep it up in our second hymn, 330. Since Christ my soul from sin set free, this world has been a heaven to me amid our sorrows and its woe. This heaven my Jesus here to know. Stand again while we sing uh, this lovely hymn. delighted to have Rebecca, Rebecca Barry with us tonight. Rebecca, you're very welcome. We're going to ask her to come now. She's going to bring us a couple of messages and so on. Thank you.
Thank you, Rebecca. May the Lord bless those lovely hymns to our hearts tonight, and especially for those in the meeting, those listening on and they're not saved. May this be the night when you will come and trust the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. Just a few announcements I'd like to make just now. It's good to see you all in God's house tonight. We welcome you, and if you're visiting, we give you a very warm welcome, and those tuning in uh, online as well. We pray that the Lord again will come and bless us in the meeting tonight as we turn to His precious Word just in a few moments' time. The announcements are as follows. Do remember the prayer meeting on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, and I'll be here, God willing, to take the prayer meeting on Tuesday evening. The Little Treasures on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And then on Thursday night, the Ladies' Fellowship meeting will be going to every home crusade. And as I announced this morning, the bus will be leaving ladies on Thursday night at a quarter past uh, seven sharp. So do please remember that. Friday night, the children's meeting and the children's meeting plus at 7 p.m. And this is the final meeting for the term, and it'll be the party for the primary school age children. So again, take note of that. And the youth fellowship will be at 8 p.m. Next Lord's Day, the Sunday school and the Bible classes at a quarter past ten. The services, 11.30 and 6.30 p.m. And next Sunday night, as we announced this morning, we're having a special family night service. And our brother, Mr. Roy Robinson, will be coming along to give us testimony. And the Rainey family will be here to sing. So please let others know about the special testimony night. And there'll be supper Uh, provided for everyone after the meeting next Sunday evening. Now, we normally have the Lord's table on the fourth Sunday evening of each month, but because of the family night service, we will be remembering uh, the Lord's death next Sunday morning. So the Lord's table will be next Sunday morning instead of the evening because of the family night service. Just please take note uh, of that as well. There's a protest rally on Saturday, the 25th of March. That's this Saturday at 10.30 a.m. at the City Hall in Belfast. And this has been organized by our presbytery, and it's against 
the new abortion uh, laws that have been introduced into Northern Ireland. So do remember that if anyone can go down to that protest. It's next Saturday morning at 10.30 outside uh, the City Hall. Vision magazines are available, and if you didn't get your copy last week or this morning, there's still some copies there, so please take your copy as you leave the church this evening. Also, let me announce the Reverend Fred Greenfield has a new CD out, 10 pounds, and they're here tonight. Uh, You can get them from uh, the access as you leave. Uh, Just take one. There's a sheet there beside them. There's no money taken today, but you can uh, put your name down in the sheet and you can pay later. But we would encourage you to get that CD. uh, The proceeds will all be going to cancer charity for the children. So that's a good cause, and we would encourage you to please buy one of those CDs. There's an after-youth rally tonight in our church in Akali at 845, and the Reverend Timothy Omerod is the guest preacher uh, tonight. I think that's all the announcements I want to make just now. We're going to sing another hymn, And the singing is very good tonight again. Let's keep it up as we sing this hymn, 593. There's a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. We're feeding on the living bread. We're drinking at the fountainhead. And whoso drinketh, Jesus said, shall never, never thirst again. Keep our seats uh, as we sing the first part of this hymn, please.
Pastor Vega to come and bring us our final message in song. Thank you. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank Thee for Your presence with us tonight already. And we thank Thee, Lord, for this lovely hymn that Rebecca has sung to us. We praise Thee, Lord, that You looked beyond our sin and You saw our need. And we thank Thee, Lord, that You reached down and You plucked us, those of us who were saved as brands from the burning. We're so thankful tonight, Lord, that we're saved. 
We thank Thee for Your mercy to us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, O God, we pray for those in the meeting tonight who are still far away from Christ, knowing nothing of His so great salvation, that even this evening they would turn from their sin and seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. We do pray, Lord, that You would draw near to the hearts of sinners, that You would reveal Yourself to them. O God, we can look back to that day. Many of us, Lord, when You spoke to our hearts and You came with power and conviction and You revealed unto us our need of Christ, and because of that day in our lives when we were saved, Lord, we are heaven-bound tonight. O God, we thank Thee, we praise Thee for all Thy mercies to us. We pray what You've done for us and what You've given to us that You would do and give to others, even in this meeting tonight. And we'll be very careful, Lord, to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. I suppose one of the greatest conversions that we read about in the Bible is the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, known to us better, of course, as the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul's conversion is unique in many ways, but certainly when we consider what took place on the Damascus Road, we can say that a definite miracle took place in the life of of Saul of Tarsus. Of course, all conversions are a miracle. Each and every one of us who are saved tonight, a miracle has taken place in our hearts and lives because the Lord has reached down and saved us as well. But here in this portion of Scripture in 2 Timothy and chapter 1, Paul is just about to die. He's in a prison cell. He's writing to young Timothy here from a prison cell. But as he looks back over his life, the apostle Paul can testify to the grace of God in his life in saving his precious, never-dying soul. You know, men and women, when we come to die, the only thing that will matter is if we're saved or not. I wonder, as you're gathered in God's house this evening, are you saved by the grace of God? Now, this is a message that we preach and emphasize every week from this pulpit. Indeed, it has been preached and emphasized ever from the doors of the church has been opened here in Tandragi over 55 years ago for the preaching of the gospel. And God willing, until Jesus comes again, the Word of God And this truth will continually be preached in this house because salvation is a necessity, a necessity. And when we come to die and when we come to face the last enemy and go out into God's eternity, the only thing that will matter is that we're born again of the Spirit of God. What did God's salvation mean to the Apostle Paul? Well, here's what it meant. Look what he says here in verse 8 and 9. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And look at verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Here we have Paul, I believe, giving his testimony to young Timothy, as he writes to Timothy here in this epistle. 
And as we consider Paul's testimony here, as he writes to the young minister, we learn a number of things very, very simply. And I pray that you listen carefully tonight, especially if you're found in the meeting and you're not a Christian, you're not saved. If you're listening on and you're still outside of Christ, we learn here what God's salvation meant to the Apostle Paul. What did it mean? Well, of course, first of all, it meant a day of mercy in the past. We're only after making reference to the day when Paul got saved. We have that recorded for us in Acts chapter 9. And Paul clearly speaks about that experience that he had in Acts chapter 9, the day he was saved, when he said at the beginning of verse 9, who hath saved us? Paul there, of course, is referring to the day when God saved him by His grace and redeemed him by His precious, precious blood. Saul, of course, was a wicked, ungodly sinner, and he certainly needed God's salvation. But of course, we all need God's salvation because the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you take the time to read and study Acts chapter 9, that day in the past when Paul was converted to Christ, it was a day of mercy. It was a day of grace in the life of the Apostle Paul because the Lord revealed Himself to Paul, convicting him of his sin, showing him his need of salvation, on that day on the Damascus Road, the Bible tells us clearly that the Apostle Paul fell on the ground in the dust, and he cried unto God for salvation. And that day was the day of his new birth when he was made a new creature in Christ Jesus, when he was born again of the Spirit of the living God. That day the Lord spoke to him personally. And the Lord, as He spoke to Saul of Tarshish personally, revealed to him that he was the sinner of the deepest dye. Why persecutest thou me? That's what the Lord Jesus said to Saul of Tarshish. And that day, not only did the Lord Jesus speak to him and reveal to Paul his sin, but He revealed to the apostle Paul that day that he was the resurrected Christ, the only Savior, and thank God, Paul was given the grace to call upon the Lord and to be saved for time and for eternity. My friend, let me, at the close of the meeting tonight, very simply ask you the question, can you look back to a day in the past? Can you look back to a day in the past when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to you, when He revealed to you your sin and your spiritual condition before Him, and when He saved you by His grace. Are you saved tonight? That's the only thing that matters. Maybe there's a young person here tonight, and you're not saved. And maybe you're thinking, well, I'm not going to die. Well, of course, you don't know that, because we're not to boast ourselves of tomorrow. But in the normal course of life, if you're young, you have probably many years in front of you. I certainly pray that God gives you many years ahead of you. But the truth is this, that we don't know what a day may bring forth. And that's why it is imperative for you to get saved if you're not born again of the Spirit of God tonight. And trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Redeemer. But can you look back to a day in the past and can you say tonight, the Lord has saved me? Like the Apostle Paul could say here, who hath saved us. And of course, the us there, he was referring to young Timothy as well, because Timothy could look back to a day in his life when he was gloriously converted to Christ. Can you say tonight, the Lord has saved me? That's what Paul is saying here. As he considers his life, as he looks back to that day in Acts chapter 9 on the Damascus Road, as he marched to Damascus in order to arrest the Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem to persecute them, 
That day was the day when the Lord Jesus reached down and showed him mercy and showed him grace. My friend, if you're not saved tonight, you need the grace of God. You need the mercy of God. It's only the Lord Jesus can save you. And you know, you'll never be saved until the Lord Jesus speaks to you through His Word, by His Holy Spirit. You'll never be saved until you realize that you're the sinner, that you're on your way to a lost eternity. And you'll never be saved until you recognize that Jesus Christ is the resurrected Savior. I pray tonight, if you cannot look back to that day in your life, like the Apostle Paul, when you were converted to Christ, that even this would be the night, this would be the time, this would be the meeting, place where you would have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus, and even this evening that you would call upon Him for salvation. Because, you know, salvation is personal. It's personal. You've got to recognize that you're the sinner, and you've got to recognize that you need to be saved. Your mother, your father cannot be saved for you. Your son, your daughter, parents cannot be saved for you. Salvation is personal. And the Apostle Paul here is giving a personal word of testimony to that day when the Lord in mercy reached down and redeemed him for time and for all of God's eternity. But I want you to notice something else. God's salvation not only meant a day in the past for the apostle, but of course, God's salvation meant a day of service in the present. Now, Paul here is in a prison cell, of course. We have already emphasized that. Very soon he would be taken out, and he would be martyred for his faith. But he's still living. And the interesting fact is this. Even when the apostle Paul was in the prison cell, he was still serving the Lord. And here we have him writing this epistle under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Timothy. He's writing the Word of God because God is inspiring him to write this epistle, and he's still being used of God. Now, of course, time would not allow me tonight to trace back the history of the Apostle Paul and how he served the Lord from the day he was converted to the day that he died and went home to glory. But the truth is this, all his life, he served the Lord with all his heart, soul, and mind. And, of course, when we consider, when we consider Paul as a servant of Christ, we must say this, that the apostle Paul was a man whose life was changed, transformed by the power of God that day on the Damascus road. You see, the Bible tells us if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And when Paul was saved on the Damascus Road, his life was changed forever, and he started to serve the Lord. That's why he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He fell in the dust a sinner. He arose from the dust a saint. He fell in the dust a wretch and a wicked individual. He rose out of the dust a servant of Christ. And now, although he's in a prison cell, He's serving the Lord with all his heart. Look what he said in verse 9 again of 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, who hath saved us, and then he goes on to say this, and called us unto a holy calling. There Paul is speaking about his service, his life of service. Then look at verse 11. He speaks about uh, his service again. He says, we're unto, I am appointed, I am appointed a preacher and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. My every day from the day Paul was saved, he served the Lord. And that's why he could say in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Oh, what a change came about in Paul's life. Oh, child of God, isn't it wonderful when the Lord saves us he gives us a service for him to do 
We're saved to serve. How often we have said that. We have only one life. It'll soon be passed. And only what's done for Jesus Christ will last. And those of us who are saved tonight, my, we can identify here with the Apostle Paul. Salvation for us who are saved, it means a day of conversion, a day of salvation in the past, but it means a day of service in the present. And I pray that we will take the opportunities that God has given to us, even in this 21st century, to continue to serve the Lord with all our hearts, souls, and minds. For life is very, very short, and our lives upon this earth will go fast, go past very, very quickly. But you who are not saved tonight, praise God if you were to get saved this evening, then you could start to serve the Lord tonight. Tell me, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Young person or older person, still unconverted, still in your sin, my, the best life that you could live from this day forward would be to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Lord wants to save you and to redeem you, and He wants to save you and redeem you so that He can use you in His service. And thank God, if you were to come tonight in true repentance and faith, sinner, and trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Savior, then this night you could start serving the Lord. And I'll tell you this, the Lord would take you up, and the Lord would use you in His service. If the Lord could save Saul of Tarshish, if the Lord could change the life of Saul of Tarshish, and then use that life to the glory of God, the way that the Lord did as we read through the book of Acts, then the Lord can do that for you. There's no knowing how the Lord could use you tonight, young person, older person, boy or girl, if you were to give your life to Christ this evening and to step out by faith and trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Savior. What did God's salvation mean to Saul of Tarshish, to the Apostle Paul? It meant a day of conversion, a day of salvation in the past. It meant my, uh, a day of service, a life of service indeed, in the present. But notice something else here. Take a look with me there at verse 12 of Second Timothy and the chapter 1, and you'll notice that it meant a day of glory in the future. We have already emphasized that Paul here is in a prison cell. He hasn't long to live Oh, he's still serving the Lord, even in the prison cell. The Lord is still using him, although he's confined now. He can't go on any missionary journeys now. But you know, God's salvation meant a day of glory in the future because Paul knew because of his conversion, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Savior, that the day when he would die he would go home to be with Christ for all eternity. Look what Paul says in verse 12. For the which cause I also suffered these things. He's talking about the persecution, the imprisonment there. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And then take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, and in verse 8, Paul goes on in this epistle, and this is what he says, thinking about his future in heaven. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul knew that he was on his way to heaven. The apostle had the assurance that the moment his breath would be taken from his body, that he would be with the Lord for all eternity. You see, this day that Paul is speaking about in our text is describing the day when he would leave earth and go home to glory. Oh, what a day that's going to be. What a day that was going to be. 
for the Apostle Paul. And of course, the day came when he was martyred for his faith. The day came when he died and when he went home to be with the Lord for all eternity. Oh, my friend, what does the future hold for you this evening? If you're not saved, the future is very bleak. The future is very bleak indeed, because the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know, this day that Paul is speaking about in our text is described in the Bible as as the last day, as the great day, as the judgment day, as the day of wrath, as far as the sinner is concerned. And that's why the Bible emphasizes the importance of having a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. God hath prepared a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. My friend, that's the reason why we would impress upon your heart tonight your great need of God's eternal and everlasting salvation. But what a day it's going to be for the saint of God. Oh, child of God, isn't it wonderful tonight as we are gathered in God's house under the sound of God's precious word that we who are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, we can, we can look forward to a day in the future when we will go home to see the King in all His glory. We're going home to glory soon to see the city bright, to walk the golden streets of heaven and bask in God's own light. Oh, thank God for one who has redeemed us for time and for eternity. My friend, what about you? What about you this evening? You're found in God's house, perhaps listening on, and you're still a stranger to grace and to God. You've no hope and you're still outside of Christ. And if you were to die now, you would be lost forever. Oh, would you not come even this evening and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Thank God the Lord Jesus this evening is willing to give you everlasting life because He died upon the cross, and upon that cross of Calvary, He shed His precious atoning blood in order to provide eternal salvation for the whosoever will. And thank God that invitation of the whosoever will, it means you tonight. If you would only but come and trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Redeemer. What does God's salvation mean? mean to you this evening? Does it mean anything to you? Perhaps you're here tonight, and it means nothing to you. It means absolutely nothing. Oh, my friend, I pray, I pray that even before you leave this meeting tonight, that you'll be able to say, like the Apostle Paul, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. In other words, that God's salvation will mean to you a day of salvation in the past, a day of service in the present, a day of glory and splendor in the future, that you will be able to read your title clear to mansions in the sky. That's my prayer for you this evening if you're still found outside of Christ, if you're still on your way to a lost eternity, my prayer tonight is that you will come and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God the Bible tells us, and what a glorious text it is, that God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know why Saul of Tarsus could be saved on the Damascus road? Because Christ had died for him and that Christ had risen again for him. You know why you and I can be saved tonight? Because Christ has died for us and He has risen again for us. 
And thank God, because of that death and that resurrection, you and I can be justified in God's sight, and we can know that we're truly born again of the Spirit of God and saved and on our way to heaven this evening. Or would you not come? The hymn writer said, only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. And thank God He will save you now. But my friend, He'll only save those who call upon Him. He'll only save those who come to Him. He'll only save those who turn and trust in Him. Because the Word of God tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Turn and believe the gospel. I pray tonight that God will give you the grace to come and to call and to turn. And thank God if you do, you can leave God's house knowing that your future is secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. He hath saved us and called us with a holy calling. Let us all bow in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for Your presence with us tonight. We thank Thee, Lord, for the simple, wonderful, glorious message of the gospel. And we thank Thee, Lord, we can say, many of us can say like Paul, He has saved us and He has called us with a holy calling. O oh God, we thank Thee for the redemption that is found in Jesus Christ alone. And we thank Thee, Heavenly Father, for Thy mercy. And, O oh God, we thank Thee that we're still in the day of grace. And we praise Thee, Lord, that You're still showing mercy to sinners, even in this 21st century. O oh God, I pray tonight for those in this meeting, for those listening on, Lord, who have never received the mercy of God, that even tonight, Lord, they would realize that God's mercy is offered to them and that they will come and accept Christ as their Savior. And Lord, that they will leave God's house tonight knowing that they're on their way to heaven and having the assurance of God's redemption. And oh God, do it for your own glory and your own great name's sake. For it's in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen.